Documentation is an integral part of our classroom. I think we do it all the time without even thinking about it. We use it for assessment, planning, parent education, teacher education, mm -hmm. to show a progression of our curriculum. We do it without thinking. Yeah, it's too. just a habit. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all write down notes every single day. We have experimented with quite a few methods. I've experimented with smaller sticky notes. I've experimented with per child. I've experimented with um, per area. But, and I've done this over the course of three years. And the system that currently, I might come up with a better one, that I'm liking right now is I have clipboards readily accessible with the um, index card and a pen. I like to have the index card for the day and for the session so it will always have the date and the session. So it says 429 a.m. And then um, if you notice, there's all different writing on here. So there's my assistant's writing, my writing, and we just write the things that we think are documentation worthy, almost like a, a running conversation. And um, I, I, I do write details. I write things that are going to spark my memory. A good observation note would have the date, the kids, the, the setting, and something that you are looking for. It's just not, oh, they played nicely, or they were having fun. Um, in a sink and float type of observation, it would be, did they make a prediction ahead of time? Were they able to do that? Were they able to see, um, to, to, to have language discussion around that? And were they able to see a conclusion and possibly discuss it with the small group? Those are kinds of things that I would write down. Observation notes should be succinct because I think that we can all get caught up in a lot of verbose wordage and a lot of detail and sometimes that detail would preclude you from getting something else that's important so I think the goal is to get a very concise two or three sentences that really speak to what was going on at that moment in time today I was taking them in several different places in the classroom I can actually stand in one place sometimes and just do a snapshot a moment in time of what kids are doing that I think is valuable and connects with what I'm looking for so um, if I know that a child is uh, struggling with language, I might be focusing on that. What are you doing, sir? I'm like smoking for a while. If I know a child is struggling with social skills, I might be writing down something that was really neat that happened with social skills. I might do something at group time. I might see something with sensory that a child hasn't done before. So that's what we do. Then what I will do, put it into the online assessment system so that documentation um, is in there. It has to be an ongoing thing that's part of your curriculum. I do rely on the notes every single day. Um, I do rely on what you wrote, what you saw that I might not have seen that you wrote down. I review that and I say, oh wow, I missed that, but good thing, you know, Cindy or Peggy got that because then it's a team approach. I actually think um, getting the camera and taking photographs is a big part of documentation. When I see somebody doing something they've never done before or kids working together and reading together or just to see how the kids are coming along, I like to have a photograph to uh, look back on. I'd rather go take a picture of the kids instead of writing it all down because it takes so much time and this way I can look back at the picture and I can see what they were doing and who was working together and so forth. And what I like is you take such great photos and just, you know, you're there at that moment. We just reflect back on it. We can automatically see, like you said, that they were in a certain area of the classroom, who they were with, but we can also remember, like, the, the dynamics. Another reason I like to do the pictures, too, I like to make two copies of it and send one home to the parents so they can see what the children are doing. I like that because then the kids that might not necessarily talk about that moment in time mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the classroom, that the parents might not have had that rich picture to look at to spark mm -hmm, a conversation mm -hmm. with their child about preschool. Right. So I like that. Now I like to take videos better than I like to do the stills because it helps me remember what's happened as far as activities go. Um, and you got the pictures, you got the sound, and it's a continuum, so you don't have to write notes all the time. You can just reflect back as to what is going on and just continue with the lesson or the activity and the spontaneity of the kids as they're, you know, working together. Dramatic play or reading a story or playing games, you know, anything that they do 
out of the ordinary that I, you can't really remember when you're taking notes. You kind of catch them mm -hmm. spur of the moment and yourself spur of the moment just finding that they are interacting with somebody that they don't normally interact with right. or something that they're saying that they don't normally say. That's interesting and fun to watch because then it shows the progression that they've made from when they first got here to where they are now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just like the ordinary things too because I think that when we review the videos and we've both done this that we notice things we wouldn't have noticed before right. mm -hmm. and then we can take additional notes on the video clips but, but we can't always get that moment in time that a video can get. And so we might have no, not noticed someone in the background or somebody interacting with somebody that wasn't even the primary focus, which is cool. I like it when the kids look at the video because mm -hmm. they absolutely love to see the video themselves. Right. And they just light up and it's like they relive that whole moment again. <laughs> and it's just so exciting to see them, their excitement over, remember when we did this? And they're actually doing some reflection. The video clips spark a conversation with the parents. I think she's a totally different girl at school than she is at home. So I kind of get to see how she's progressed. They act different at home. But it's so cute to see her outside of her element in a different environment and how well social skills and speech progressed and how good she's doing. I'm so proud of her. One of the other great things that we've kind of stumbled upon with Tiana, our teacher cadet from the high school, is that her supervising teacher can't always be here. So we can do the video clips of Tiana, email them over to the high school, she can review them, and then that teacher can have a conversation online with me, and we're able to show some skills that we wouldn't maybe have been able to capture on paper. You do have the strawberries. My hope is I'm going to review it with her and say, look, look what a great job you actually did. And then uh, hopefully that'll build her confidence. <laughs> so we do it without thinking. It's just become a habit. It's an integral part. We see something that we think is um, rich or important or substantial. We just immediately reach for the camera, the video, the note cards, the clipboard. It's just part of our program. Yes, absolutely.